January 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 16 from the New Testament. Now when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He said, When evening comes to you, it will be fair weather because the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today because the sky is red and darkening. You know how to judge correctly the appearance of the sky, but you cannot evaluate the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to you except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples went to the other side, they forgot to take bread. Watch out, Jesus said to them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So they began to discuss this among themselves, saying, It is because we brought no bread? When Jesus learned of this, he said, You who have such little faith, why are you arguing among yourself about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the five thousand and how many baskets you took up? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand and how many baskets you took up? How could you not understand that I was not speaking to you about bread? But beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to be on guard against the yeast and bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They answered, Some say John the Baptist, other Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, You are blessed, Simon son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Then he instructed his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders chief priest and experts in the law, and be killed and on the third day be raised. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, this must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me because you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but on man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it benefit a person if he gains the whole world but forfeits his life? Or what can a person give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, there are some standing here who will not experience death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. God, I always wondered why you said to the disciples in Matthew 16 to not tell people about you, because I kind of always thought that that was... The reason that you had them. So I did some research and some studying and found out that you were saying that because the people at the time had the wrong idea about you and even the disciples were saying wrong things about you. They hadn't fully grasped who you were, what you could do, what was about to happen. And we see part of that in the story today where, where they got a few things wrong. But God, if, if your disciples, the 12 men who you pulled, young men who you pulled around you to talk ab about you and eventually build your church on these disciples, if they get it wrong, then I guess I'm a little bit worried about me. You know how much I love you. 
And you know how much I love to talk to people about you. But I want to make sure I'm getting this right. I want to make sure that what I'm reading is right. What I'm telling people is right. How I'm living is right. I read your word a lot. And I ask for your guidance a lot. And I just hope that you never say to me, stop talking about me. Because you have it wrong. How you're living is wrong. What you're saying is wrong. If you're going to do something, do nothing at all because it's wrong. So God, I just challenge everybody who's listening today, and especially myself, that we will study your word and we will ask for interpretation from you and guidance from you and wisdom from you. We ask that you search out our heart and anything that isn't pleasing to you that you will just remove from us and from our lives. I'm okay with the painful part. I don't have a problem with that at all. I just want to be pleasing to you, God. I get up in the morning and I want to be pleasing to you. And throughout the day, I let the world interfere with that. And for that, I am truly sorry. But please help guide your servant to say and do and act in all the ways that is pleasing to you. So that you will continue to allow me talk, to talk to others about you, God. Strengthen me. Strip away from me everything that is of this world. I only want what is left that is pleasing to you and, and glorifying to you, God. Thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.